So to help you guys get an understanding of what's expected of you for this week's assignment, I went ahead and uh, did the assignment more or less. Uh, it's not complete. I've only done it for one page. But this is an idea of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your content to be separated into divs and arranged on the page based on your wireframe and borders around each of those divs. And so what that entails is with my HTML, I've gone through, whoops, uh, I've gone through and divided all of my content into these separate divs and assigned each of those divs a, either a class or an ID. And the difference between the two is that an ID is for when an element only exists in one instance on the page. So I have this div ID nav bar, and there's only one, one object with the ID nav bar on my website, and it's this, uh, this large upper section where I have all of my navigation pieces, this gray section on my page. That's the div ID nav bar. Um, and if you look down at div ID stories, Within that div ID stories, I have it broken up into several classes. I have this div class for a single story, um, which contains both the photo and the text elements here. And then I have class div classes for both the photo and the text. And I was able to go into the style sheet and give each of those pieces I have the full stories section that encompasses both stories and then I have the the class uh, attributes for the story objects as a whole as well as the elements of the story both the photo and the text and so this is kinda how you can break it down into these individual pieces and arrange them on the page um, so a couple things when you're arranging elements. By default, when you put new elements into HTML, it stacks them one on top of another along the left-hand side of the page. So we have our main gray box, and then the next element would go directly underneath it, directly underneath that. So to align these things and put them side by side, what you need to do is use this float left on each of the divs that you want to be lined up next to each other. And what this is going to do is rather than uh, put it, rather than do a return carriage and put it on the next line, it's going to place an object directly, uh, directly to the right of the previous object, aligned as far to the left as possible. So my, uh, my resume here, you see I did a float left and it's next to the stories element so it ended up being pushed all the way to the left uh, and actually if I take out this margin um, right here you'll see that that'll actually sit right next to the stories so I wanted to give it a bit more space that's why I put that margin in there and we need to save our file and then refresh and you can see that margin go into place on the right hand side of stories. I could also give that margin on the left hand side of resume, either one would work. I could go in here and say margin left and say 10 pixel there. Don't forget your semicolons and your colons to divide. This is the, the element, the element that you're uh, changing or the attribute, and then this is the value that you're giving the attribute. Um, so if I give that 10, a 10 pixel margin on the left hand side of resume, save it, you should see that space right here increase by 10 more pixels. And there it is, right? So you can do those margins on either side, but that is how you should space out your different elements on the page. Um, you can also see here that I've given width uh, values to a lot of my divs, and my widths are primarily percentage-based. 
The reason I made them percentage-based is because it works really nicely when you change the size of the page if those are percentage-based. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You could give them uh, you could give them a fixed pixel value as well. And then when you resize the page, it'll trim off portions of it. Um, one other thing I did here that's kind of interesting, not necessarily something that you need to do, but something that I'll uh, let you know about regardless, is on the story photo, I actually wanted the photos to be trimmed. If I, uh, if I take this overflow hidden line of code out, uh, and save it, and then reload, you can see this photo is actually a fair bit larger, and I just wanted it to trim down rather than resizing that photo a lot more to fit in. I just wanted to use the div to trim off the excess. And so there's this overflow property um, that allows you to uh, modify the overflow contents of a div. If you're interested in all of this stuff, you can do web searches and also this W3Schools is a really valuable resource. And actually, I have the overflow page uh, open right here. So there's a couple different things you could do. You could give it a scroll attribute. So if I give that overflow a value of scroll and save it, Let's see. Ah, there we go. I had to reload the page. And now you can see that we have scroll bars on this photo that let us move it around and see the whole thing. It's probably not what I actually want to do here. Uh, but you can play around with these different elements, and there may be a situation where it works better for you. Um, I'm going to stick with this hidden value for that, though. But this is kind of what I'm expecting you guys to do. I want you to play around with some different things. Try and replicate the wireframe that you've created uh, earlier in the class. If you can't quite replicate it, uh, that's fine. I'm not too terribly worried, but just write up like what kinds of things you struggled with what you want to do with it, um, and we'll work on getting moved towards that. We've still got a few weeks, uh, but this is a pretty big undertaking, so we need to be making progress each week uh, and identifying things that are troublesome and doing everything that we can to resolve them. So please try your best to replicate and make sure you give a nice solid write-up about what kinds of challenges you met, what kinds of things you would like to do, what kinds of things uh, you were surprised you were able to do, um, all of that stuff. Just kind of share your thought process along with the assignment this week. And good luck.